Okay, hello everyone. So today I'm going to be showing you guys how I give Kirby a bath. Um, the way that I give Kirby a bath and the way that I give Pumpkin a bath are different because they are different dragons, they have different preferences, they have their own personalities. So the way I give Kirby a bath is I turn on the shower because she likes to have some kind of rain effect, which your bearded dragon might like as well, but Pumpkin does not like that method. It's scary to him. He does not like it. He just likes to be in the um, still water. Um, of the bath instead of having the shower. But today I'm gonna to show you how I give Kirby a bath. So before I even run the water or anything, I wanna make sure that I have everything in the bathroom already for me to give Kirby a bath. So her towel, her toothbrush, and most importantly, the temperature gun. So while I'm running the water, I'm gonna go ahead and use the temperature gun to um, gauge the temperature of the water coming out of the faucet. So when you are bathing your bearded dragon, do not put them in the water while the faucet is running because it could come out really cold at first really hot at first that could be a problem for your bearded dragon as well so just as literally anybody's shower or bathtub will have little pieces of hair in it probably make sure you get all of those little pieces of hair out um, just in case they go and drink the tub water while they're in there you don't want them accidentally drinking little pieces of hair or dust from your washcloth or towel that fall into the tub naturally you don't want those things in the tub so make sure your tub is clean and free of any little fibers or anything before you go ahead and put them in there. So now I'm gonna go ahead and turn the faucet on and I'll record it as well. And showing you guys how I use the temperature gun to measure the temperature. I like to keep the temperature when it's coming out of the faucet between 87 to 92 degrees. You're not gonna get a really accurate temperature reading if you're gauging the water coming out of the, the faucet from the shower. So you wanna make sure you're gauging the faucet when it's coming out heavy so you can get the most accurate temperature reading. Okay, so while that's filling up, I'm gonna go get Kirby and put her in there while it's filling up and getting really warm and stuff inside. Before I get her though, I am going to get her towel and put it in there just so I don't have to run back in here and leave her alone in the tub to come and get it later when I wanna take her out. So that's one thing that you definitely don't wanna do is leave your reptile, any reptile, any animal, even a dog, cat, whatever you want to bathe, child, human child, don't leave them in the bath alone. Don't leave any helpless creature in the bath alone ever. Not even for a second. So, so I went ahead and left her towel here. The bath is filling up a little and I'm going to talk about water levels in a second, but I'm going to go ahead and plop her in here. Okay, so she's in the bath and I'm just sitting here um, watching her. I hope you guys can hear me over the sound of the water. But she likes to run, as you can see, right under the, um, the, the faucet of like, I guess the rain effect. Um, like I said, your bearded dragon might enjoy this as well. I know some that do and some that don't. It really just depends on your dragon. So temperature is definitely key when it comes to a bearded dragon. I feel like that's the only difficult part about a bath for a bearded dragon is really gauging the temperature to the correct temperature. So while she's sitting here, she's gonna hang out, enjoy herself, and hopefully use the bathroom. One of the main reasons why people give their bearded dragons baths, which is a question that I get all the time, is why would I be giving my bearded dragon a bath, is to help them use the bathroom. I bring her into the bath once a week is enough. As long as she goes to the bathroom once a week, especially because she's kind of in the winter state of half brumating right now, I don't give her a bath as often because I'm not feeding her as often. If you feed them more than that, you know, 
Gauge it yourself. So now I'm gonna sit here, move the water around with my hand, because if you guys didn't know, bearded dragons actually don't recognize water unless it is moving. So that's the only way that Kirby will realize that she's even in water or surrounded by water right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and move it around with my hand, even though the shower is doing most of that work. And I'm also going to show you guys about the water levels. So as you guys can see, the water level is right up to her shoulder, and that's about as high as I want it to go. So once it's right there, if it goes any higher than that, I'm gonna push this up, have some of the water drain down, and then push it back down once the water level goes back down to like the pan. So I'll show you that in a second. Okay, so right now the water is draining. And once it gets low enough, she can always tell when it's draining. She's like, excuse you? <laughs> But once it gets down low enough, as you guys can see, it's lowering already. Once it gets down to like her hands, that's when I'm going to um, stop the water again to have it fill up some more. So that's just kind of the cycle that I go through as I sit here and wait for her to either drink water or uh, use the bathroom. Some people give their beardies a bath so that they can uh, drink water as well because other methods like the water dropper method don't work for them. So the bearded dragon um, drinking water in the bath method may work for you as well. So now that the water is low again and she's getting restless because she senses that there's no more water in there, I'm gonna go ahead and stop it back up again. And so that's just gonna be a cycle of it going up to her shoulders and then me lowering it and going up to her shoulders and then me lowering it until she uses the bathroom. Now we just kind of play the waiting game. <laughs> Once your bearded dragon has pooped or drank water or whatever you want them to do in the shower, now it's time to dry them off. Sometimes Kirby likes being wrapped in a burrito and sometimes he doesn't. It seems like today he will not like to do that. Yeah. <laughs> or she. I keep calling him he. I know, guys. I'm sorry. I'm still not used to it, but... You don't want to be in the burrito today? Okay, you just come right here then. <laughs> You just come right here then. Go. Good job, Kirby. Oh. So your bearded dragon might want to be wrapped up in a towel or they might want to climb up on your head. Really, it's up to them. So, you know, whatever you want, or I guess whatever they want. God, child. Okay, so once your dragon has had a bath and they're dried off with the towel, then you want to go ahead and put them immediately in their basking spot. They are desert creatures, thus they thrive and need the warmth to survive. Water makes anybody cold when they come out. So you got to make sure that you put them in the basking spot, not just any place in the tank. Put them in the basking spot. All right, so I put her on the little ramp onto her basking spot so she can go ahead and climb up on there and choose her own little spot there but this is actually now that they have used the bathroom a great time for you to weigh them because that will be the most accurate um, weight for them since they don't have food inside of them so after they poop is the perfect time for you to weigh them real quick I want to show you guys I got a calendar the other day because I really needed to track um, their calcium vitamin greens crickets poop, water, and worm, um, all of that stuff, like when they're doing whatever. So I got this a few days ago and it's really been helpful. So today is the sixth. So whenever they have a bath or calcium or greens or crickets, I go ahead and cross it off. And then I made a little legend down here for me to remember what each letter means. Um, it looks like kind of a mess, but it is really helpful in tracking like when they had calcium before, if they had vitamins this week or not, because it's really hard to remember if you're just keeping it in your brain, especially when you have two dragons that are eating two separate things on two different days or drink water one day 
day or go to the bathroom one day and not another dragon would do that. So because things got a little more complicated in terms of tracking food and water and using the bathroom and everything, once I got pumpkin, I decided to get a calendar to help me track everything. So um, yeah, here's a little example of something that you can set up for yourself. Come on. Good job. He likes to chase after them. I usually show it to him, show him that it's coming, and then drop it. If I don't show it to him before I drop it, he'll be like, what? What is happening? Oh! What happened? His leg flew off. Good job, pumpkin. Always, you know, these are really big, right? But they're still not too big for the uh, width between his eyes. So that's something um, that is kind of a golden rule for feeding bearded dragons is that the food should never be bigger than the width between their eyes. So if there was a cricket that was like giant or something, I would not give it to him because it would be way too big. Good job. So hello, it's the next day and I am here with Pumpkin and I realized that he hasn't had water um, since last, today's Thursday. He hasn't had water since Saturday. So I'm going to go ahead and give him water right now. And I want to show you guys how I do it with the water dropper. I have taught him how to use the water dropper. It's actually pretty simple, but it is time consuming. It takes some time. But um, I don't think he was using a water dropper before, from my knowledge. Um, when I um, rescued him, I rescued him about a month ago. Um, so, <laughs> that being said, I'm going to show you guys how I do it with the water dropper. And I also use the same method with Kirby as well. So, with Kirby, I basically um, just drop it on her nose or on her face, you know, and she knows immediately. I'm just going to take the water out with the dropper and put it on his nose his eyes closed but I know he's gonna want it I'm gonna show him the water you can do this with a towel I'm using a stuffed animal at the bottom to catch the water but just show them that this is water and drop it on the tip of their nose make sure it doesn't go into their nostrils or anything but just at the tip of their mouth here Drop a few drops and keep doing this. Maybe even run this along the tip very, very lightly, down their chin very lightly, just to show them that this is something that has to do with their mouth. So it'll cause them to eventually lick, and then when they lick, then they'll see that there is water there. It's water! Here you go, pumpkin! So just keep doing this. It could take a while before they even realize what's going on. <laughs> but, you know, that's perfectly fine. You may be able to hear the crickets in the background. He's also shedding on his face. You can see uh, the lighter parts of his face. He's starting to shed there. There you go. Good job. And they'll continue to lick and just go ahead and every time they open their mouth, squeeze the dropper. So they open and while they're opening their mouth, squeeze some water in there bit by bit. You don't want to do all of it <laughs> at once. You just want to do it drop by drop into their mouth. Try to go with the pattern of them licking. So... And they'll move around while you're doing it too, so that's okay. Sorry. Sometimes he doesn't like it when the glass uh, water dropper touches his, his mouth. <laughs> Do you want any more? There's more.
No. No more. Okay, well, that was good. You had some drops. Good job, pumpkin. Good job. Good job, baby. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> so, cut all my hair off. You know, it's 2021. Time to step into your authentic self. I've wanted to do this since I was a kid. I finally have the confidence and um, I just feel like it was time. It was time to finally do it. It was becoming overwhelming to me. <laughs> so I finally cut all of my hair off and it feels amazing. I highly recommend everybody do this if you really feel like it's for you. Anyway, we have reached the end of the video. I hope this video helps you to know the reasons why you could give your bearded dragon a bath and one way or two ways, I guess, that you could give your bearded dragon water, which is definitely crucial to their diet, is water just like any living creature. I hope you guys enjoyed. Make sure you like and subscribe if you want more content from me, Kirby and Pumpkin. Let me know in the comments down below some other ways that maybe you gave your bearded dragon water. I know there's lots of different ways that people go about doing this. Also, leave some suggestions in the comments down below if you have any questions or any videos that you would like me to touch upon. I'll see you guys next time. Bye!